Hi, I'm Dr. Anne Best with Focus and Flourish. In this video, we're going to talk about the paraprepucial versus the paramedian approach. This approach you would use in the male dog if you wanted to do a cystotomy or perhaps a retained testicle and you know that it's intra-abdominal. For the paraprepucial approach, the skin incision is made just medial to the caudal mammary gland and parallel to the prepuce. For the paramedian approach, that incision is made just lateral to the caudal mammary gland. That paraprepucial skin incision will place you medial to the caudal superficial epigastric vessels. On the paramedian side, you'll be just lateral to the caudal superficial epigastric vessels. And that may be a little bit easier to manage because you're not so tight to that larger vessel, which is the caudal superficial epigastric. With the paraprepucial approach, we enter the abdomen through the linea alba. This is what makes this approach really nice, is we're all familiar with entering the abdomen through the linea alba. We've done it many times with the spays. We know how to close it, and we know what we're going to see, how it's going to look when we get inside. It's a familiar approach. The paramedian approach takes us into the abdomen through the abdominal abdominal wall itself, lateral, however, to the thicker rectus muscle. So by entering through the abdominal wall, we are going through muscles, the transversus and likely internal abdominus muscles are going to get cut. They're flat and thin muscles. They're not really thick, but we are going to get some muscular bleeding and that way we might also be more likely to get some post-operative bruising because of that. Let's have a look at what the blood vessels look like when we are entering through either approach. You could see that we've got the caudal superficial epigastric, that is the lower vessel, and it runs all the way up the abdomen itself. But from the caudal superficial epigastric, there's a branch that leads right to the penis, and that is known as the cranial penile vessels. When doing the paraprepucial approach, you don't necessarily have to cut that because you can stay caudal to it. However, I typically will cut it because I like to have a long enough incision that I can nicely get my fingers in there, get the work done, exteriorize the testicle or the bladder, whatever it is I might be working with, and not struggle. But you could see if you're doing a paramedian approach, you're going to be lateral to the caudal superficial epigastric, and therefore you're not going to have that cranial penile vasculature to deal with. Let's look at some of the advantages of each of these approaches. With the paraprepucial approach, we enter the abdomen through the linea alba. One, that is very familiar. We know how to find the linea alba. We know how to enter through it and close the linea alba. It's a common approach that we use. And familiar, familiarity in surgery is a big advantage. With a linea alba approach, we're likely to get less bleeding because we're on the linea alba and not going through muscle, as well is, and this is one of my favorites, is when you go in through the linea alba, you can always and easily extend your incision cranially if necessary. So if you go in and you find something or don't find something that you're looking for, and you feel you need to explore more or see more, you may want to extend your incision and get that done. Finally, one of the big advantages for the paraprepucial approach is, again, because you're going in through the linea alba, you have access to both left and right sides of the abdomen. So a bilateral cryptorchid, this would for sure be your approach of choice. Now, with the paramedian appro approach, the advantage here is that you're going lateral to the 
caudal mammary gland and therefore lateral to the caudal superficial epigastric vessels, which gives you a little bit more breathing room to get this done. You just don't feel so squished between the vessels. You also don't have to reflect that prepuce to the side. So, you know, one less thing that uh, you need to do to this patient. And if you need to extend your incision into that inguinal prescrotal area, so I'm talking about now a cryptorchid patient, and you don't find the ectopic testicle in the abdomen itself, and you weren't able to palpate it in the inguinal area, well, maybe you want to just extend your incision to include both that inguinal and abdominal area, and it's easier to do with the pair median. Not that you can't do it with the pair prepucial, but it is easier with the pair median. And finally, the pair median is actually quite well described in most surgical textbooks, whereas the pair prepucial isn't. The disadvantages of each of these approaches. So for the paraprepucial approach, I think the biggest disadvantage is the thickness of the subcutaneous t connective tissue and fat that you have to go through. There's a lot in that area, and some people don't like dealing with a lot of subcutaneous fat. That's going to be an issue for those people. When you do have such a thick subcutaneous layer to deal with, it is really important that you close it well, otherwise you will likely get a seroma formation. Whenever I am dealing in this area and I have that much fat, I always use a two-layer subcutaneous closure, a deeper interrupted layer, and then the more superficial subcutaneous that I use a continuous pattern to get that closed. And I find I get a really nice closure and seroma formation is not a big deal. The other disadvantage of the paraprepucial approach is that cranial, cranial penile artery and vein that earlier on I recommend that you just cut it, divide and ligate so that you have potential to a better exposure and you're not fighting the tissues so much. So you have more room to move. It's not a big deal, it's extremely superficial, but you do need to deal with it. It's there, that's all there is to it. And then if you do want to increase your incision with the paraprepucial approach to make it increase it caudally so that you can maybe deal with a cryptorchid testicle that you're having a hard time finding, you have to really be careful because you are going to be cutting over the caudal superficial epigastric. Now it drives, it goes in a little bit deeper as you go further caudal, but you still have to be very careful about it. Be aware. Finally, this is not a technique that I find is described really anywhere in the textbooks. So luckily for you, I do have some videos and I do describe it for you. So watch my video. The disadvantages of the paramedian approach, one, you cannot extend this incision. So you are only going to have a view of that real caudal abdomen, that corridor in the caudal abdomen. So if you don't find the retained testicle there and you think it's further up, there's nothing you can do. It is not the right approach for that. So just know what you're dealing with before you go in. And if you know for sure that testicle is there, this is a really good approach for it. As we've mentioned earlier, you're not going to use this approach, the paramedian, for bilateral ectopic testicles, bilateral cryptorchids. You don't want to have two incisions for this patient. Just do one incision and get both through there. Because you are cutting through muscle, even though it's flat, thin muscle, you're still going to be cutting through some muscle and therefore you're more likely to get those muscular bleeders. And so you'll get dripping into the abdomen, which is not a big, big deal, but it can hinder your ability to see what you need to see. Also, because of the bleeding of the abdominal wall, you are more likely to get more bruising in that area postoperatively. Just be aware. And 
this approach itself, because you're not on the ventral midline, it's not as familiar. And so when you get into the abdomen, it, you need to take a moment to orient yourself. You need to be able to put yourself where you need to be and know where all the adjacent organs are. So once again, if you get in there and that testicle is not right there, that ectopic testicle is not right there where you think it ought to be, this approach can be a little bit trickier. Just be aware, everything has pros and cons. So which approach is best for you? That's a decision for you to make. I personally prefer the paraprepucial approach. And that's just a personal preference. It doesn't make it a better approach because it's the one I like and use than the paramedian approach at all. However, it's the only one I have videos of that I can show you how to do it because it's the approach I use. If you're comfortable with, you know, closing thick subcutaneous fat, the paraprepucial approach is just going to put you in a familiar place in the abdomen and it allows for, I'm going to say, maybe a bit more versatility. You can extend the incision, you can go look left and right. And that, to me, in surgery is an important thing because if plan A doesn't work out, you really have to have a plan B and a plan C. So you need to be prepared for those. And I think that's what I like about the paraprepucial approach. But again, that doesn't make it better than the paramedian approach. It's just what I like. You figure out the one that you're comfortable with and use it. They're both good. I hope you found this video helpful. Please hit the like button and subscribe to our channel.